hey, 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 everybody. Thanks for joining. Hey, listen, I just want to let you know, Eggbot feels that Rick Costa is beautiful today. So just to let you know, how is everybody doing tonight? Uh, Rick, he does look beautiful today, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> it's a good day. It's a good day. Um, you're blushing, right? Man, I like, hey, he, he, he. He he don't he 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 doesn't pick or choose. He he uh you know he's a, a equal opportunity to love there that guy. <laughs> um, it's a new it's that new haircut. See, it's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's got to be. All right, guys, <laughs> I am Jason Wallace. I am, uh, well, I'm a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, and um. I'm a prayer warrior, an intercessor. I know, isn't it? That's too funny. Um, I'm a Bible reader. I'm a devoted husband and father. I am a child of God. I am a new creation in Christ. I am God's, man, God's workmanship, uh, created for Christ in good works, right? For good works. I am a citizen of heaven. And I am also a very, very, very proud member of the Jesus of the family. And... Um, after this broadcast, if you guys get a chance, go take a look at JesusDidIt.org. You will, that's right, I'm a saint, right? I think we all are, right? Um, says it in the Bible. It's got to be true. <clears throat> it's got to be true because it's written in the Bible. The Bible The Bible proves itself to be true over and over and over. I know I didn't say it. <laughs> I got I to gotta grab some new ones off that sheet right there. That sheet, that red one. Right where there where the red arrow is, go down to that, that thing and download that, print it out, and you can put it with your Bible and you can read one of those affirmations every single day. You can pick one, pick a new one and go find the verse that that corresponds to it. And those are the affirmations that that where Jesus says who you are uh, in the Bible. So take a look at that. That's some good stuff there. Um, while you're there on the website, take a look at the, the scripture thought of the day. Rick changes every day. Um, he has a, a scripture, uh, you know, a, a passage of scripture, and then he has uh, his thoughts on it. And then uh, also th there is the, all the Jesus Did It broadcasters. So take a look at those guys there. You know, there's a good bunch of people there, um, definitely. And then below that is the broadcasters that we like to watch. And then there is also um, some shirts and hats and hoodies to buy. And, um, you know, some cool stuff there, the I Am shirt. Um, the new healing uh, healing shirt, definitely uh, check it out when you get a chance uh, after the broadcast. Um, all right, guys, so let's get into the reading tonight. The reading is Joshua 21. We're cruising along. That's a good thing. Guys, thanks for all your invites, follows, and shares, and all the hearts. I, you know, I really do appreciate it. All right, so here it is. New picks to come. People wearing stuff, too. There you go. All right, so Joshua 21. Towns for the Levites. Well, these guys finally get some favor here, it sounds like. Let's take a look and see what, what we got going on. Um, now, the family heads of the Levites approached Eleazar the priest, Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads, or Nun, and the, and the heads of the other tribal families of Israel at Shiloh and Canaan, and said to them, The Lord commanded through Moses that you give us towns to live in with pasture lands for our livestock. So as the Lord had commanded, the Israelites gave the Levites the following towns and pasture lands out of their own inheritance. The first lot came out of, uh, what is that, Colthalites, according to their clans. The Levites were descendants of Aaron, the priest. Uh, the priest were, uh, Aaron the priest were allotted 13 towns from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The rest of Kohath's uh, descendants were allotted ten towns from the from the clans and tribes of Ephraim, Dan, and half of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon were allotted thirteen towns from the clans of the tribal of the tribes of, of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and half the tribe of Manasseh and Bashan. The descendants of Merai, Mar, Merai, according to their clans, uh, received twelve towns from their tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. 
So the Israelites allotted the Levites these towns and their pasture lands, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. From the tribes of Judah and Simeon, they allotted the following towns by the name. These towns were assigned by the descendants of Aaron, who were from Cotholite clans of the Levites, because of the first lot fell on to them. They gave them Kerath Arba, uh, that, that is Hebron, with the surrounding pasture land in the hill country of Judah. Uh, Arba was the forefather of Anak. Hey, Miguel, thanks for joining. I'm Busker. All right. Uh, yep. But the fields and the villages around the city uh, they had given to Caleb, the son of Jephaniah, as his possession. So the descendants of Aaron, the priest, they gave Hebron, a city of refuge, for the accused of murder, uh, Libna, Jeter, Eshtoma, Holan, Deber, Ayan, Ayan, yeah, Ayan, uh, Ju Judah, Juta, Juta, and Beth Shemesh, together with the pasture lands, nine towns from these tribes. All, all from the tribe of Benjamin, <coughs> they gave Gibeon, Ger uh, Giba, uh, and Analoth and Alman together uh, their pasture lands four towns. The total number of the towns from the priests and descendants of Aaron came to 13 to, uh, together with their pasture lands. The rest of the Cotholite clans of the, of the Levites were allotted towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country Ephraim they were uh, given Shechem which was the city of refuge, and uh, Ge uh, Gezer, uh, uh, Kibz Kibzium, and Beth Horon, uh, together with their pasture lands for four towns. Although the tribe of Dan, uh, or sorry, also from the tribe of Dan, they received El El. I always mess that one up. El Teka, right, or something like this. Um, Gib Gibbethon. Uh, Boy, they're getting tough. Uh, Aelia, A A A I A uh, that place, A I J A L O N. Yep. Oh no, I'm gonna get uh, some. Oh no, I do not want to restart, and I don't want to pick a time. You're gonna snooze. Sorry. <coughs> Windows is playing nasty with me. <laughs> um. Uh, Gath Ramon, uh, together with their pasture lands and four towns. From half the tribe of Manasseh, they received uh, Tanik and uh, Gath Ramon, together with their pasture lands, two towns. All these ten towns and their pasture lands were given to the rest of the Cotholite clans. The Levite clans uh, of the Gershonites were given from half the tribe of Manasseh, uh, Golan and Bishan, the city of refuge, and uh, B. Uh, what is that? B. Esh, uh, together with their pasture lands, two towns, from the tribe of Issachar, uh, Kish Kishian, Debra Debrath, Jarmuth, and uh, En Ganem, Ganem. <laughs> together with their pasture lands, four towns, from the tribe of Asher, Michel, Abdon, uh, Hel Helketh, and Rehu, together with their pasture lands, four towns, the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee, the city of refuge, uh, Ham, uh, was it Hamath Dor, Hamath Dor and Kartan, together with their pasture lands, three towns. The total number of the towns of Gershonites' clans came to 13, together with their pasture lands. The Merorite clans, with the rest, that is the rest of the Levites, were given from the tribe of Zebulun. Uh, Jok Jokinim, uh, Karta, Dimna, uh, the Halal, together with their pasture lands, four towns. From the tribe of Reuben, Bezer, Hazez, Hez uh, Kedemoth, and uh, Mepoth, Mepoth, yeah, that place. <laughs> I'm not doing so good tonight. Together with their pasture lands, four towns. Uh, from the tribe of Gad, Ramoth, and Gilead, that is also a city refuge. Manathium, uh, Heshbon, and Jezer, 
uh, together with their pasture lands, four towns in all. Total number of towns allotted to the Maronite clans who were the rest of the Levites came to twelve. The towns of the Levites in, their, in the territory held by the Israelites were forty-eight in all, together with their pasture lands. Each of these towns had pasture lands surrounding it, and this was true for all these towns. So the Lord gave Israel all the land it had sworn, or all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them the rest uh, on every side, just as he had sworn in their, their ancestors. Um, not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave them all their enemies into their hands. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Whew. Chapter 21, done. Guys, that's uh, chapter 21. All these towns and stuff. It's really interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, guys. I'll make sure I've got to... Yep, we're right. We're good. <laughs> All right. That's a, that one just needs a big clap. Let me go take a look and see if we got anybody over on Busker. Nope, I don't. Just had one comment. Oh, and Rick was there too. Great. Hey, how's it going, Sev? How are you guys doing? All right. So, um... We're looking pretty good. So uh, every night, every night we read from the Our Daily Bread. The Our Daily Bread is a free publication. Um, you can get it from the odb.org website, and um, you can go take a look at the uh, digital download there if you want. I'm not sure. They may even send you to your house if you sign up for it. You just got to check and see. Um, so for Sunday, July 16th, uh, the title is Deep Roots, and this is written by uh, Mart Dehan. Deep Roots is the title. The sequoia tree, one of the three species of redwoods, is among the world's largest and the most enduring organisms. It can grow to 300 feet in height, weigh over two and a half million pounds, that's, yeah, two and a half million pounds, and live for 3,000 years. But the majestic sequoia owes much of its size and longevity to what lies below the surface a 12 to 14 foot deep matting of roots, spreading over as much as an acre from uh, of earth. Firmly grounds it, uh, firmly grounds its towering height and astonishing weight. A redwood's expansive root system, however, is small compared to the national, to the national history, religion, and uh, anticipation that uh, that undergrid the life of Jesus. On one, occasion, on one occasion, he told a group of religious leaders that the scriptures they loved and trusted told his story. In the synagogue of Nazareth, he opened the scroll of Isaiah and read the description of Israel's Messiah and said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Whew. Later, after his resurrection, Jesus helped his disciples understand how the words of Moses, the prophets, and even the songs of Israel showed why it was necessary for him to suffer, die, and to raise from the dead. Uh, or to rise from the dead. What grace and grandeur to see Jesus rooted in his, in his history, or in the history and the scriptures of a nation and to see how extensively our own lives are rooted in our need for him. Amen. A little prayer here today says, Father in heaven, please help us to never forget that the history of Israel and the inspired words of the scripture ground us in seeing our need for your son. Amen. And the footnote says, all scriptures uh, use us to see our need for Jesus. All right. So today's reading was from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 49. And the key verse is uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Whew. Good stuff.
good stuff. Hey guys, hey everybody, how you doing? Um, sorry if I didn't uh, acknowledge you when you walked in. I'm just uh, reading the book. So Father Darren's in the house, Becky's in the house, Rick Costa, Liz, uh, Desert Liz, uh, Terry. We got Seb in the house. We've got Egg Eggbot. Is Eggbot behaving? <laughs> He's being a little polite earlier. All right, so we got a bunch of people coming in tonight. This is really good. All right, guys. So um, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports or anything like that, um, definitely um, um, throw it in the chat stream, and we'll pray for you. Eggbot stocks. I know. All right. The problem is, is that he does a, such a good job of keeping track of the comments, so I can go back and, and see what's going on. Um, uh, I'm going to do something as a favor uh, for someone. Um, uh, I spelled it wrong. So. Um, so someone had, um, and I just like totally misspelled something, so don't get mad at me uh, in the chat, um, whoever may be seeing that. Um, so yeah, if we don't have any prayer requests right now, uh, I'm going to talk about something, and I know that uh, um, prayer for motivation, because you usually get get the mornings uh, nervous, and you stay in bed for 30 minutes. Hey, listen, it happens the same thing to me, man. It drives me crazy. I'm sitting there going, why am I just laying here? <laughs> it's horrible, right? Lord, Heavenly Father, we lift up Sev today, and we lift up myself as well, too, Lord. Um, you say that we should be praying for ourselves, so I'm going to pray for myself as well as Sev. Lord, we, um, uh, both of us, we have a problem with getting motivation in the morning to be able to get our butts out of bed. So, Lord, wake us up uh, with uh, with just uh, such vigor and, and, and anticipation of being able to start the day and be able to uh, go forth and, and be able to do our jobs and and um, provide for our families and be able to um, just just be able to have a great day. So Lord, lift, lift us up and give us motivation to be able to wake up in the morning uh, early enough and beyond time. Lord, we thank you uh, for uh, the your uh, your alarm clock to wake us up. Lord, please, we uh, we ask this in your mighty Son's name. Amen. All right, guys. So um, someone had had some talks about some things and and. Um, so I wanted to bring to light, you know, a couple days ago we talked about um, uh, someone had brought up um, that they are trying to share their faith with someone who's a Mormon, and um, never heard back from that person, which is fine. Hey Steve, thanks for joining. Um, you know, uh, which is fine because I'm hoping that that person's really working working through their situation. <clears throat> but um, there was some people that that were brought. Hey man. There's some people that brought up some questions about um, about Jehovah Witness today and some other people's broadcast, and so um, I just want to uh, first get an understanding, right? And and how do we share our um, true Christian faith, right, with someone who is um, who is uh, believing stuff that's really not wholly true? So um, what we're gonna do is from from this book. This is a great book. Uh, if you guys don't have this book, I recommend you get this book. It's called um, it's called Dare to Share. All right, Dare to Share. Grab the book. It's, it's cheap. They have they have a first version and a second version. Uh, this is the older one, and there's a newer newer version. It's a really good book. It's called Dare to Share, and it's called A Field Guide to Sharing Your Faith. It's written by Greg Steer. S T I E R. Really good book. You want to take a look at that because um, it helps you to be able to. Um, um, how how you share your faith? How do we share faith with people? So uh, in this chapter, chapter twenty nine, this describes how to share our faith with Jordan, the Jehovah Witness. So um, I don't see the person who is actually requesting this this uh, talk, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure that she will come on and uh, and uh, give her a replay with it. So all right, so let's get, let's get into this part of the reading, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it a little bit too. Uh, this is some good stuff. I love learning about some new things and being challenged um, further in my faith. And, and when we see stuff that that is uh, not true and all honoring to God, we want to we want to bring it to light. We want to talk about it, right? We want to definitely um, talk about it. So let me get into my prayer time thing here and make it prayer time fellowship. Oh, prayer time discussion and fellowship. 
Oh, that got all messed up, didn't it? Look at that. Uh-oh. What happened there? That's just bad news bears. I went and tried to get fancy and see what happens. Huh. Oh, Maribah. Mara, bye. Um, you know what? Did you guys happen to notice that you can't block somebody immediately from a broadcast? No, I'm, I'm having problems with that. It's interesting to me. All right, so we're going to read this in a minute. Just give me a second. I'm trying to make my thing, my picture look pretty, so that way it's, uh, there we go. It looks a little better. All right, guys, so we're going to be talking about uh, Jordan, the Jehovah Witness, and we're going to figure out how to share our faith with that person because um and, and and what this does this book actually helps you understand um the the belief system that is uh, that is with this person is also with some other some how you know some things to do that right the same issue earlier yep so here we go let's take a look at this so this is this is a sharing your faith with jordan to jehovah witness so uh the, the books or the title of this chapter starts out I met Jordan at my door. She was not alone, but with another lady with her, an older lady. She was hard to shut the door because she also had a little child with her. At first, it felt like she brought the child along to get some sympathy for me, from me so that I wouldn't shut the door on her. As she began to talk, I was impressed with her boldness and the way that she asked me about eternal life. But being thoroughly acquainted with her beliefs, I began to ask questions about heaven, about heaven. I knew that she believed that heaven was only for a select group of 144,000 individuals, and hell, I knew she believed that hell was not eternal, but a place where sinners are literally incinerated in an instant. Although the, the questions were tough, I tried to ask them in a nice way. Once the questions started getting, getting tougher, the older lady with her began to jump in. It became obvious to me that the, this older lady was training Jordan, and, all, and when, it, when it got too tough, she would take over. So I simply asked the older lady to allow Jordan and me to continue the conversation. After all, Jordan was one who began the conversation, not her. The older lady didn't want to hear that, but I insisted. As Jordan and I continued our conversation, it became clear that she didn't have, a, have good responses to my many questions. Finally, the older lady said something like, Jordan, this man is not willing to listen to the truth. Let's go. Hesitantly, she, she, uh, she complied. But I could tell that in the midst of our conversation there, there were many new thoughts in Jordan's mind, new doubts about the val validity of her belief system that she had been embracing. So here we go. Here's a basic understanding, or basic description. Jordan's group is called Jehovah Witnesses and uh, has been around for more than 100 years. In early 1870, a Bible study group began in Pennsylvania. It was led by a man named Charles Tazy Russell. Uh, in July 1879, the first issue of the magazine, Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence, appeared. By 1880, dozens of congregations had spread from one small Bible study into nearby states. In 1881, Zion's Watchtower Tract Society was formed. The society name was later changed to Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Many were witnessing from the house to house offering Bible literature. Fifty persons were doing this full time in 1888. Now the average number worldwide uh, is about 700,000. Jehovah Witnesses identify themselves as Christian and number over 6 million. Their headquarters are in New York. It is an international organization known for its extensive preaching and publishing activities. With the Watch, Watchtower and Awake, a religious, uh, yeah, religious magazines, and the New World Translation 
of the Holy Scriptures being the most popular examples. Common misconceptions. So here's some common, mis common misconceptions. Jordan uses the same Bible as the Christians. So I'm guessing that's no, that she doesn't. Jordan's group is just like the Mormons because they go door to door. See, that's not true. All right, so there's a misconception there. Jordan's group is a subgroup of Christianity. And that is not true either. Um, so these are common misconceptions. Three fascinating facts. Jordan goes to Jehovah Witness meetings five times per week. Whoa, they go to church five times a week. That's like, uh, you know, pretty interesting. Jordan does not celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, or birthdays. Nor does she say, bless you, when you sneeze. Jordan can't get a blood transfusion for religious reasons. Yeah, so I don't believe sharing blood. Uh, things, are things we probably agree on. Jordan believes that there is one true God, Jehovah. Alright. Well, at least there's some stuff there, right? We agree with that part of it. There is one true God, and I guess you could call him Jehovah because it's written in the Bible, right? Uh, Jordan believes in a real person named Jesus Christ. Well, so do I. Jordan believes Christ died for our sins. Well, that's good. That's absolutely good. So we've got a couple of things we agree on. Uh, things we probably disagree on. Jordan doesn't believe in the Trinity. The biblical concept that we serve one God who exists in the form of three unique persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or an eternal hell. Whereas the Bible teaches the Trinity, Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4. Uh, who is Jordan? Oh, Jordan is our, our fictitious person who is who is a Jehovah Witness. So I, mean, I think you may have stepped in a little bit later than, than, than when I got started. So it's a fictitious person in my book called Dare to Share. It's, how to sh it's a field guide to sharing your faith. Um, if you don't have this book, Steve, especially you going into college, I recommend you get this book, man. This is a good book. Who I? <laughs> who am I? Um, so let's get back to that. Uh, that there. So the, you know the Bible Trinity teaches us in First Peter uh, chapter one verse two, John chapter one verse one through three, uh, Acts chapter five verses three and four, and a literal hell, right? And that is Revelation chapter fourteen verse ten through eleven and twenty fifteen. Jordan doesn't believe Jesus is God in the flesh. Rather, he is the same person in the Bible as the Archangel Michael. Whoa, that's a little sideways there. Whereas the Bible teaches, he is God in the flesh, under John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and, chapter, and verse 14. Jordan doesn't believe uh, eternal life is received by grace through faith alone, whereas the Bible does, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. So how do we talk to this person? Right? How do we talk to this person? This person, um, this person. What is it called, and what is it about? Um, it is called Dare to Share. It's called A Field Guide to Sharing Your Faith. It's written by Greg Steer, S-T-I-E-R, um, and it's a book that is um, helps you um, uh, helps you number one learn how to share your faith because uh, it may be hard to do, right? And then also um, how to specifically share your faith with uh, with uh, certain groups of people so uh, people who may not be uh, true Christian right or may, may be Muslim or or whatever it is so um, it's a really good book and it helps you understand a lot of things that, that were that you might misunderstand or might be misunderstood or may not even know about right yeah that's good yep yeah. that book there and I got another one too this book these books here these books are good I'm, I'm reading starting to read these ones too it's called ask me anything and like this is a book. This is a book I got um, a couple of the questions out for Rick uh, for his question he had. Ask me anything, and there's ask me anything too. Um, there's like you know why is a church such a big deal, and then what's wrong with being gay? Uh, what does God say about war? Uh, I'm having sex. So what with a question mark, right? So some really good questions here. And these are all questions that of you know that they that from college students. So it says proactive answers for college students. So it's really good and help you uh, help you guys that are that are um, that are teetering on on the faith, right? So, um, um, let me type something out here. 
All right, so um, where were we? We were suggested conversation starters, right? Are you ever worried about the reality that Jehovah Witnesses believes are so out of line with what so many other churches believe? That's a good question, right? Um, what if there really is an eternal hell uh, where those who don't trust Christ go for eternity? That's a good question. <clears throat> Why do you think Jesus claimed the, the personal name of Jehovah, I am, as his own in John chapter 8, verse 58? Could it be that he himself was Jehovah? Those are going to probably stir up some questions. I'd be cautious with that, you know, when you do that. But, but you know what the thing is, is you can be bold with those things because um, you have the verses to back you up, right, to back it up. So definitely. Um, hey, Earth Citizen, thank you for joining. Uh, Oakville Shriner, Shiner, Shriner, thanks for joining. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, so a compliment to you. So, right, so we can do some compliments here. One of the things I really appreciate about Jehovah Witnesses is how dedicated they are to knowing what they believe and sharing what they believe with others. Right, so some good things you can you can you know can do some conversation with. Um, some interesting quotes. Uh, it should be expected that the Lord would have a means of communication to His people on Earth, and He has clearly shown it in that magazine called. Uh, the Watchtower. It is used for that purpose. That's, this is like a 1939 yearbook of Jehovah Witnesses. Um, so uh, definitely there. Going going verses by verses with Jehovah Witness doesn't work. You found it's a hard way to do it. Yeah, because they'll, they'll just um, uh, take a look at it. There is like several people that have recorded their 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 uh, their interactions with Jehovah Witnesses um, and um, and some interesting ones I've seen, and just uh, it's really interesting. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Um, and then there's uh, here an interesting quote, right? Number two it says, <clears throat> "Sorry, Jesus never claimed to be God. Everything he said about himself indicates that he did not consider himself equal to God in any ways." And that was from the Watchtower book, right? Um, yeah. So those are interesting quotes, and they're not true. You know, because based on what we had read here earlier about what we disagree on. So um, some, so here's some tips or suggestions. Um, don't get bogged down in endless discussions about the Trinity. All right? uh, instead, focus on Jesus being God and on salvation by grace through faith alone. So there it is. Yeah, she probably put her phone down so she can do something. Jehovah Witnesses spend hours each and every week, each and every week, being taught that they are only the only true church. So be prepared for a series of long conversations if you want to make any progress. Yeah, because they're, you know, they're going five days a week. Five days a week they're going to church, right? Thank you, BBBBSBS66. Thank you for inviting followers. <laughs> um, I think it's about ready to get fun in here. <laughs> Latoria, thank you for joining me. Just have a weekly conversation with Jehovah Witnesses. It was interesting. Yeah, I, I guess it would take some time, right? And that's what basically what you're saying. It says here that many Jehovah Witnesses are former Protestants, right? So they're former people like, uh, like my, you know, myself and some other people, um, that are, you know, uh, Lutheran, Methodist, Baptist, etc. So be prepared to listen to their past church experiences without judging them, right? Definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Latoria. I do appreciate you. Listening, phone not in hand, tapping the screen. I know, I know, I know. Uh, oh, someone's writing in Arabic there. That's uh, great. And so let's see what they say. Uh, she says here, um, speak to me, she says. This one says, the day you said about me, Freda Hamad Dick. Um, uh, they, they are jealous. Uh, and Wishy and Cutter, and Cutter must be, uh, and Zim. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, honey. <laughs> Just really not much meat to their potatoes there. Uh, what is on your mind? Something like that. Aha. Uh -huh. And then uh, tell me about you. 
<laughs> this is fun. Wish said. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, thank you for joining my Arabic friends, uh, people who read and write Arabic. Uh, you said one day I was a blockbuster block. <laughs> That's funny. Well, we, we could do this all day. Maybe she thinks I'm cute. I doubt it. <laughs> I highly doubt it. Yep, that's an Arabic sex bot. Isn't that awesome? Uh-oh, it's the last thing you eat, she writes. And then she says, waste, waste. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Is it? I'm sorry, I had to pull us off. Well, there's, that was comical, extremely comical. <laughs> Listening to a running conversation, yeah, that makes absolutely no sense. It's just like two sex bots sitting talking to it. Our sponsor is planning to broadcast. Oh, who's your sponsor? <laughs> oh, they're on a dis they're on a distinguished road. <laughs> oh boy, these are funny. These are hilarious. Let's see. This one says, "Na azine na Tiffany." Somebody Tiffany, right? And this one says, "In their mind, on it." I wonder if she can't understand what I'm saying. And then she writes, "There's no God." Oh, I'm so sorry that you believe that. There is God. There is a God. Absolutely, He loves you so much. Jesus loves you. Unbelievable. How to read it, Tiffany? Niggle has problems. Uh, like these are so funny. Unbelievable. How to read Tiffany. That one it won't translate for some reason. Uh, his reputation said Tiffany. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. If I had my keyboard there, I would type in uh, some Arabic stuff to them. But uh, because I don't read Arabic, I have to. It says speech. Speech, he says. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm just loving this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Any converts and God translate our words. Yeah. Um, I don't need God to translate my words. Uh, I have egg drop to translate your words. <laughs> oh, boy. What do you say? I'm telling you what they're saying, dude. Watch him from the morning of you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oops. Let's see. Let's see. We got always. Well, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm, I'm engaged. I gotta know. I gotta know what's going on. Somebody writes, uh, "Me, me, read your words." Michelle M Machete. Oh, Machete. That's nice. Which says, "Oh, these are funny." Arabic sex bots. That's awesome. Anyway, so let's get back onto what we were talking about before we got. Before we got derailed uh, with our Arabic sex box, he laughs at us. I don't laugh at you. I laugh at the situation. Uh, Jesus loves you. He said to him, ha, ha, ha. She writes, God buster. You know what? Jesus loves you. Absolutely. God is covering and forgiveness. Yeah, we're going to pray for you. Uh, Alrim, 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 all right? Alrim. All right, guys. So, yeah, let's get back on our... Yeah, literally, right? Literally. You're sad. I'm so sad. I'm so sad that you're sad. But listen, you can, be, you can be very, very glad to know that Jesus Christ loves you so much that you don't need to be sad. Um, your name is Reem. Thank you, Reem. Um, and uh, a Reem shop. Yep. So, uh, so let's get back to our discussion here real quick, and we can finish up what we are talking about. So, um, yeah, definitely for some further research here, research, you can go to uh, www.daretoshare.org uh, forward slash Jehovah Witness, and that'll take you to a web page that has more information about that. And um, you can definitely um, take a look at that. How do you understand our Arabic words? I have a program that translates your Arabic words. Uh, money, uh, he has money to translate. Uh, Plus, I've worked with Arabic people for a long time, so um, I can uh, I can pick out some words here and there. So, and, but I have a program that that translates it because uh, because well, it's there and it's free for me to use. I don't need very much money to do this because it's free. <laughs> it's called Egg Drop. So, guys, listen. Uh, Floss, translate to English, right? Translate to English. Yep, translating to English. I click on the thing and it says translate. If you really want to see, I can show you. It's really, really cool. <laughs> you ready? Here you go. You're going for a ride, everybody. 
okay, you type something, and then I'll click on it, and it'll tell you what you said. We have to go back a little bit. Oh, there we go. She says, I am pretty. That's what she wrote. Oh, Wendy, you just came too late. Wendy, we just got done with the discussion about um, Jehovah Witness. And then we're, uh, yeah, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Um, but definitely catch the replay. And I know you will anyways, but um, she has left. So she says, has he? <laughs> Broadcast is sweet. Isn't it cool? That's what we do. You know, we, we, uh, um, we, we speak about Jesus Christ here. Uh, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is the one who has helped us, right? So, um, uh, to be able to, uh, to, he gave it, he gave us, created us, right? Um, God created us to be able to do stuff. Goodbye. You have a very nice time. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Right? You love the broadcast. Absolutely. Um, I love the broadcast too. It's a good time. I'm so sad that you're sad. <laughs> uh, so guys, yeah, definitely have a great time. Broadcast is beautiful. I appreciate your words. Thank you so much. Um, so guys, um, yeah, if we, uh, we talked about, um, I just realized you can draw on here and it translates into words that look familiar. Oh, really? I didn't know you could do that. That's kind of cool. Um, I don't know what's going on there. It's very interesting. So guys, yeah, um, uh, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, right? And so, um, you know, let, let's talk about, let's talk about some of that stuff. All right. So. I have something here that helps me understand, right? It helps me share the gospel with you guys, right? So what we have is, I have a bracelet, right? Very simple bracelet. Um, and we made this with the, with the kids this week, all right? And, and Vacation Bible School. The first knot is the beginning of your life, right? And so that means God has a plan for you, all right? That, and that plan, um, you can read that in Psalms chapter 139, uh, verses 15 through 16, right? The black bead, the black bead represents sin. All right, so that black bead represents sin, and sin separates us from God. And that's, a, uh, you can look that up in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The red, the red heart, right, the red bead, that is that uh, Jesus shared his blood on the cross to pay for our sins. And you can find that reference in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The white bead, okay? The white bead means that we are cleansed and forgiven when we accept Jesus as our Lord, right? And that's 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, all right? Jot these down. You will definitely check these out, um, and you will definitely understand who you are um, and, and what Jesus did for you. The blue bead, the blue bead is you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe in Christ. And that's Galatians chapter 3, verses 2, and 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. All right? Um, the green bead. The green bead is for believers should grow spiritually by praying, reading the Bible, and sharing Jesus with others. And that's what I'm doing, all right? Um, so <laughs> I'm doing that part, I think, pretty decent. Okay, I guess. Uh, and that's Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Now the gold bead. The gold bead uh, is we will be in heaven with Jesus forever. That's Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, right? And so the folks that caught that you were figuring out what they were saying, yep, yep, absolutely. That is one of the great things about Egg Drop is it actually helps you do the translation. Uh, the last knot. The last knot is the end of your physical life, right? And so Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and you're going to look those these verses up, right? Now, the butterfly bead. The butterfly bead, okay, um, the one that holds it all together, that is your new life, okay, in Christ. And you just got to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And uh, I don't know if this will work good or not. I might be able to grab a Will it do it? Will it do it? It might do it. It might not do it. I might have to like grab the light and do it differently. Let me see if I can do this. Let's see. Probably not. But anyways, I tried. 
<laughs> I tried. Uh, but that uh, that will uh, definitely help you understand who you are um, and and you know the gospel, right? It'll, it walks you right through the gospel just by having a little bracelet on, on your wrist. And once you get to learn what the beads mean, it's uh, it gets so much easier being able to share your faith. So definitely, someone had put a pretty good um, share here because I have um, gotten quite a few. We're up to 149. Wow, up to 149 viewers. That is awesome. And I have nothing else. No one else over here on Busker. I'm so sorry. And no one on YouTube. That's all right. Uh, but uh, we will definitely. Uh, uh, we'll definitely look at that. So yeah, it was really good learning about our Jehovah Witness friends and how can we share with them and knowing, um, you know, how to talk, you know, how to talk with them. So it is definitely something that you, um, um, you, I, I recommend, I recommend getting this book. It's called Dare to Share, um, a field guide to sharing your faith. Uh, get this book. Read this book first before you try to tackle um, speaking to someone of a different uh, faith, right? Because, or, you know, I shouldn't say speaking, but speaking to them about Jesus Christ. Because um, this book actually takes you right through. Uh, you know, I can give you a little, I'll give you a little sample here, I guess. So I can't, well, maybe I could eventually someday read the book, but, but, um, but really it walks you through. It's like getting ready for your journey. So, like, it, it, it asks you, it, lifts you up a little bit and tells you, you know, about Doug and uh, whoever Doug is, and then and then the passion fuel, and then get strong, and then be aware of the darkness, right? you got to be aware of it. Um, uh, and then knowing that you can, knowing that you can know and what you, and, and what you do know, right? So knowing what you really know uh, definitely helps, because that will help, help build you up. Um, and then sharing your faith with style is a, a, one of the titles there. And then, uh, and then part two is how to share your faith. So it says, bring it up without throwing up. That's one of the, that's the title of the chapter. Uh, understanding the gospel journey. Um, God created us to be with him. All right, that's the chapter. Our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. That's true. All right, and then um, praying, uh, paying the price for sin. Jesus died and rose again. Uh, everyone who trusts in him has eternal life. The life of Jesus starts now and lasts forever. How to take your friends on a gospel journey. How to bring your friends to the point of deciding. How to keep the message clear to your friends. And how to share your own story. That's really important too, right? Is to know how to, sh how to share your testimony. How to share how you came to Christ. How to have the L, uh, have the L squared conversations. I don't know what that means yet. I haven't gotten that far in the book. Um, and then how to defend your faith without being offensive. That's right there. Important, right? Um, and then uh, know how to use your seven secret weapons. This is some good stuff in this book. Uh, how to help new believers grow in their relationship with, with Jesus. So it takes you right from how to share with it, how to get them to understand stuff, right? And then, uh, and then, hey Edwin, thanks for joining over on Busker. And then, um, and then how how to how to help them, you know, springboard them into their into their journey. Um, uh, let's see. And um, part three, and that, and these are part three are these specific ones. So you know, the Starbucks spirituality. The Alicia the Agnostic, Andy the Atheist, Bailey the Buddhist, Aaron the Evolutionist, Hari the Hindu, uh, Jordan the Jehovah Witness, that's the one we talked about tonight, um, Jenna the Jew, Marty the Mormon, we talked about that one a couple of uh, days ago, um, let's see, uh, Mo the Muslim, and Nicole the New Ager, Ryan the Religious, Sid the Satanist, and Tara the typical, and Willow the Wiccan. So definitely some really specific, like there's very specific things inside of here that help you uh, be able to understand and how, and, and how to share your faith with uh, with people of other faiths. So um, 
um, definitely take a look at that. Um, if you guys have any prayer requests or praise reports or anything like that, if you're, uh, you know, you need prayer, uh, definitely put it in chat stream. We'll pray for you. <clears throat> Who am I? I must have missed that comment there, Edwin. Sorry. I am. I am a lot of things. <laughs> I am um, a temple of the Holy Spirit. I am, you know, uh, I'm holy. I am a saint. I am a whole bunch of things that the Bible tells me. And uh, all you need to do is just go to JesusDidIt.org and click on the red arrow there. And you will find out who you are in Christ as well. Definitely, highly recommend you do that. <clears throat> print that out, put it in your Bible, you know, um, so you can know who you are. You have a Tupperware cup like Sai, uh, yes I do. I got a couple of them actually. <laughs> um, I actually have an official Uncle Sai Tupperware club, uh, tup Tupperware uh, cup. Did it. Sorry, I can't type without looking too much. <laughs> so, guys, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports or anything like that, uh, definitely throw them in the chat stream. We will pray for you. Um, wow, we got a whole bunch of people just popped in right now. Thanks for joining. Uh, I appreciate you guys, every single one of you who come on the broadcast and share and invite and follow and share. Do all that stuff. You guys are awesome. <clears throat> Here's some other ones here. Ready? There's some good ones here. You know what, I'm going to run through the list, and I'll, I'll let you guys, uh, you can definitely uh, take a look at this. So, uh, who I am, who I am, who the Bible says that I am. Um, I am a child of God, and that's Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. These are all from the New King James Version. Um, so, if you're looking up the verses, references, just note that they're from the New King James Version, and you want to make sure that you, you read them from there, right? It's just me here. Yep, it's just you over there in Busker. I usually have one or two. All right, so the next one is, I'm, I'm a new creation in Christ. And it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. What's that say? The butterfly bead is the same verse. Because you're a new creation, right? You're just like the butterfly who, or, you know, the, the butterfly who came out of the cocoon. Wow, some, some uh, revelation here. Uh, and some, you know, some affirmation, right? So definitely, that's definitely why this is here. <clears throat> so I am a saint, right? And that's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. I am God's workmanship created, created in Christ for good works. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I am a citizen of heaven, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. I am a member of Christ's body, right? I'm, uh, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I am a... I am a friend of Christ, and that's John chapter 15, verse 15. I am a 10 in God's eyes, absolutely. But you have to be, you're made in his image. He has to, you, you know, he loves you every every speck, every hair that's on your, you know, on your head. <clears throat> or in my case, uh, every hair that's not on my head. <laughs> um, um, the, the righteousness of God in Christ, right? I'm the, I, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I am righteous and holy. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. I am chosen for God. Or, or, I am chosen of God. That's Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. Uh, that's Romans chapter 8, verse 37. <clears throat> Dude from Norway, welcome. Thank you for joining <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. Where we where we leave off? I'm a more than a conqueror. That's Romans. Yep. I am chosen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Right. And that's First Peter chapter two verse nine. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians chapter two verses four and six. I am a uh, I am a recipient of every single spiritual blessing in he in heavenly places. And that's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. 
Yep, I am. That's we got to keep saying this, right? Keep telling you this stuff. So this is the stuff. You read this every day. You're going to speak life into yourself. And you're not only that, you're going to know really who you are, right? And who the Bible says you are. I am redeemed. There's a good one. This, this one's like a key verse here. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. I am complete in him who is the head of all the principality and power. And that's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Exactly. This is where your confidence comes from. This is what helps you be able to share your faith with anybody, right? Knowing these verses. You know, these are your these are the <laughs> these are the things that sharpen your sword, right? These are these are what allow you to be able to to have that, you know. So to be able to use that, you know, that that tool, and that tool is the verses. Um, it's amazing how much if you just go through the verses and you're reading them, and and you may not even know what you're reading, and then sometime it'll just be called out, right? I was in, uh, I think it was Raina's broadcast the one day, and she was like, "I'm trying, I'm thinking about what the word verse is," and I, and I, I she was like, and it start, she's like, "I think it's this, but I'm not there." Hit me feel like preaching, right? <laughs> and she's like, I think it was this, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that that was in Matthew, you know, and I was like, and it's chapter 23, I think, you know, and I had to go grab the Bible and take a look and see him. I was right, it was it was in chapter 23, um, I didn't have the verse, exact verse reference, but I, I was able to get, get uh, myself into the right spot, just by knowing and listening to the verses, right, and so um, definitely knowing where these are, and, and how you can use them, is very important. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see some other ones here. I am completely, I already just did that one. I am holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, right? Uh, let's see, I have the mind of Christ. Now, this is some, this is some deep stuff, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 and Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. I, you know, I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. I am an ambassador for Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. I am forgiven of all of my sins and washed in the blood. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Hey Chrissy, Chrissy, thank you for kissing. I'm sorry, Kissy Chrissy, thank you for joining. Um, let's see what we got here. I have to blame, peace, understanding, forgiveness. I am del uh, I am delivered from the power of darkness and translated into God's kingdom. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. That's a good one. I never really read that one before. Delivered from the power of darkness and translated into God's kingdom. Amen. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, chapter First uh, Peter, uh, chapter two, verse uh, twenty-four. I am bought with a price, and we all know what that price was, right? It was Jesus' life. First Corinthians, uh, chapter six, verse twenty. I have all. I have access in one spirit to the Father, right? So that's a kind of explaining the Holy Spirit. Um, Ephesians chapter two, verse eighteen. I am the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved, uh, being saved those perishing, right? That was hard to read. The aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved, uh, those perishing. Chapter 2, or I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. I am set free from sin and have become slaves of righteousness. I would much rather be a slave of righteousness than be a slave of anything else. Uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 18. I am, I really don't understand the Roma one. Yeah, that Roma one has to do with going back to some of the Old Testament references. I'll get to, I'll explain that in a second. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms chapter uh, 139 verse 14. I am sealed for the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. So in all of this, right, if any man to be in Christ, he is a new 
creature or a new creation, right? So, um, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So just remember that. Who you are, right? You know, I usually do this every once in a while. I'll go and grab this off Jesus Did It website because um, I think some people, you know, they're, they're you know, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's very important to be able to take this information and be able to use it. Rain will begin at 134, just to let you know. <laughs> My phone just let me know. Um, but yeah, there's, um, um, and, and this stuff here. So the aroma part. So the aroma part, we read that not that long ago, and I think it was either Deuteronomy or Leviticus. I explained that how to do a certain, those sacrifices, right? And so the sacrifices, that burning, right? The burning of the flesh uh, of, of the animal. Uh, and burnt offerings uh, was supposed to be a pleasing aroma to God, and so uh, when they reference that, it just means that uh, there was an, that there was you know, an atonement. Something was, you know, going to, um, yep, like incense going up to God. Exactly, it's sweet smelling. So there, you know, there's things there that that uh, that you know, and 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 you want to be like that, right? You want to be like that. That something that's sweet smelling to God. So. I guess there's a couple of different ways of looking at it, but yeah, basically we're, it's there. That's kind of what it means. So, um, and and you know what, uh, this 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 doctrine makes a lot of sense to me, right? This the how this our theology happens to be, it makes sense to me. There's certain certain uh, ones that just sometimes there's uh, it's hard to understand. So, you know. That's why I got that book. I might actually dig back into this book because it's starting to become relevant, um, and I probably should have read it except for the first chapter. Um, so I'm gonna probably stick that one in my bag and start reading that one. Um, all right, guys, it's 20 after one here on the East Coast, and if you have any prayer requests or praise reports or anything like that, throw them in a chat stream, and we will pray for you. Otherwise, we're gonna do a nice little general prayer for everybody, and we're gonna walk on out here because uh, it is late and I know that everybody needs to get some rest and sleep I know I do and I know that um, the rest of you guys need to get some rest of, as well um, in order to be uh, a strong uh, you know uh, follower of Jesus Christ uh, we have to be well rested we have to read our Bible we have to uh, keep our eyes focused on Jesus uh, in order to uh, to make it through the day right um, if we don't do those those things, sometimes you're gonna be you're gonna be dragging butt, you know, and you're gonna be like, oh, I gotta drink, you know, four cups of coffee just to keep myself going. Mm -mm. No, 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 we don't need that. Uh, one cup of coffee is good, you know. You need Jesus the rest of the day, and uh, get some rest. That's really what it is. Um, rest will do all kinds of great things. It'll lower your blood pressure. It will. It will. Um, you know allow you to be able to see straight, allow you to be able to think clearly. Um, you know, you won't have that, that lull in the middle of the day where you're just, you're, you're tired. Mm. And drink lots of water, too. All right, so we've kind of talked about a lot of things tonight. I'm trying to Jesus and sleep. It's a great combination. Who knew? Right? <laughs> um you add a little coffee there, and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a really good mix. Um, so if you guys have any prayer requests or praise reports or anything else like that, throw them in a chat stream and we'll pray for you. Uh, pray, to, uh, pray to get rest. You, I get rest because it's hard to sleep during the day. Absolutely. you got to paint your windows black there, Wendy, so you can get some sleep. It's very tough for people who work third shift, I know. Um, your, your life basically gets turned upside down, right? So... All right, so Lord, Heavenly Father, we lift up Wendy today, Lord. We know that she uh, she is doing a, a good job, um, you know, and and uh, she's being faithful, hard worker, uh, and and who wear blinders, right? Lord, we, we know that she uh, that she is um, is doing doing a good job, and she's doing work that is geared and focused on you, um, as well. She's doing her job, uh, Lord. We know that. Uh, that she helps out people to be able to see whether bones are broken or, or things like that um, during the night, Lord. And, and without people uh, like her in, in these positions, um, you know, sacrificing their sleep at night uh, and, and being able to uh, to do that, 
that uh, that they, if there were people weren't there, some people would not know that you know they they might need uh, emergencies, you know service, you know uh, surgeries or whatever it might be without her being there. So Lord, we appreciate Wendy and all the things that she does, um, working in a, as a as a you know someone in a hospital during the night. Lord, we uh, we thank you for her presence and her her just her you know her dedication to be able to do this um, and uh, put aside her not being able to get sleep during the day just so that uh, she can glorify you uh, during her waking hours as well so Lord give her some sweet rest let her be able to uh, to get some get some good sleep tonight and let her wake up tomorrow refreshed and rejuvenated and being able to take on her day and uh, being able to help lead more people to know who Jesus Christ is as well as be able to do her her job to be able to provide for her and, and her and her household. So Lord, we lift her up to you tonight. Lord, in your heavenly son's name we pray. Amen. Need prayer for restoration of your marriage. Alright, I got you there. Holy Spirit show up and break it. Yep. Break a strong whole husband. <clears throat> Lord Heavenly Father. We lift up Miss Peach today. Miss Peach, do I have your name? Give your name and your let's see here. Let's see if I got your name. Natalie, right? Natalie. <laughs> you typed it in just fast, I found it. Lord Heavenly Father, uh, we lift up Natalie today, Lord. And we know that um, that you are um, You're, you've given us marriage. You've given us another person, Lord, uh, in, in our lives to be able to uh, to walk through uh, th this uh, you know th this earthly trail that we need that we walk on, Lord. And we know that uh, we need our other person, our other half, our other hundred percent that runs that that is uh, bound with us, Lord. And uh, we just ask that. Um, that uh, Natalie and her husband uh, would look at each other with those same looks that they gave that, and the same feelings that they had when they first met, when they first saw each other, and when they first knew that they loved each other. Lord, we uh, we ask that uh, that uh, you soften both of their hearts and let them look and see and understand that they need you, Lord, to be in the center of all of that. Lord, we uh, we know that. Um, that with without uh, without you being there in the middle of a marriage, uh, it, it's just going to be a very hard thing to do. So Lord, we uh, um, we we just lift you up, Lord. We we lift we lift up marriage, that you know the sanctity of marriage. We we ask that you uh, you help keep their marriage true and let them understand that they need each other as well as they need you, Lord. And Lord, let let them be bound together. And let them just absolutely love on each other, uh, just as they did when they were when they were first married. Lord, let them have the same fresh eyes as when they were when they were young. Uh, Lord, we ask this in your mighty Son's name to uh, to bind together marriages. Lord, uh, and not only Natalie's and, and, and her husband, as well as mine and my wife's and and anybody else who's married. Lord, let's please strengthen the uh, the the institution that is marriage. Lord. As we know that uh, it takes time, it takes effort, Lord, and we just ask that uh, that uh, you give others and the other people uh, that you give them everybody, you give us all patience and understanding uh, of our of our partners, Lord. We ask this in your mighty Son's name, Amen. <laughs> See, I'm sorry, Becky. Becky's all done. Oh, Becky, I missed your broadcast. I wanted you to pray, but that's all right. I know you do, anyways. Um, Definitely. Hey, Craig, you changed your name, Craig. <laughs> you changed it to Craig of 46. Miss Peach, yep. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Thank you for joining. Uh, give a follow and let us know how, how things are. Uh, give, give us a praise report in a, you know, a couple days. Let us know. Give, you know. And I really like to do heart checks on people we pray for. So if you're um, if you're still needing to be lifted up, come on back and we'll, we'll pray for you. Um, check out the Jesus Did It website. Becky is an awesome prayer warrior. Becky would pray, pray for you. Um, um, I know Liz prays for anybody that, I, that, that we bring up bring up and pray for. So 
Um, I know that there is lots of people on this broadcast that will pray for you. So uh, definitely uh, give us a follow and, um, and come on back. And we'd really be interested to know how you're doing. And uh, if you need to be lifted up again, uh, definitely. Um, in the Jesus Did It group, there is, um, uh, there is uh, uh, we have a men's group, we have a, a women's group. So if you're if you're needing to be uh, you know working some things out with other men or other women, uh, let Rick Costa know, so that way you can be put into the proper groups and be able to uh, you know, we can work through things. We help each other out. Um, we we talk to we talk to things. Yep. Good night. Good night. Me too. Uh, I got about a minute to go and I'm shutting down. So guys, uh, definitely yes, woman to woman and men to men. That is the best way to handle situations, and. Um, and sometimes even if it's married couple to married couple, right? You know, trying to talk to things. Uh, there's so much technology here that we should be able to, you know, very easily help out um, any other, um, you know, uh, person here uh, in the world, really. You know, we have this conferencing software. We have lots of different tools to our ability. So uh, to, to, you know, for our use to be able to uh, spread the word of Jesus Christ. So yep, she's still up. She don't got school, so she's uh, she's playing hooky and staying up late. She's probably writing something, you know, lesson plans or or something, right? You <laughs> know. All right, guys. Any more prayer requests or praise reports? Uh, if not, we're gonna just say a nice general prayer over everybody, and we're gonna rock on out and get some rest. All right. Only my eyes open while I pray on this one in case I catch a bra catch a prayer, a prayer prayer request that comes in. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we uh, we appreciate you and and everything that you give us. We uh, we thank you for this day. We thank you for a really good Sunday. We we're able to worship you. We we're able to. Uh, share the gospel with so many different people. Lord, uh, I thank you for giving me the, uh, the, the ability to be able to, uh, to share your word and be able to share your love to other people, uh, even if it's only a little bit. Lord, uh, I thank you for working through, through my issues, Lord, and, and helping to me see the certain things in my life that need to be changed, things that need to be uh, addressed and, and worked through. Lord, uh, we, we pray for um, all the people that come onto the broadcast here today, Lord. Uh, I thank you for all the questions. I thank you for clarity and understanding. I thank you for the technology to be able to figure out what someone's saying just by pressing a, a translate button so we can be in understanding with people. Lord, we, I thank you for um, time to start getting back together for school. Yeah, getting ready to start a new year. Lord, we, uh, we, we, uh, we ask that all the teachers, all the teachers that are in, in following the group, and anybody who works in school and works with the children, and uh, whoever may be in, in new endeavors where they're, where they're, where they're working through uh, uh, starting some new things to help out kids, Lord, we, uh, we ask that you give them the rest that they need and the and the and the um, I guess the best word to be is the tenacity to be able to get their stuff together so that way they can get their lesson plans figured out and their uh, you know their their business uh, uh, plans and everything else be straightened out so they can uh, really act upon and be effective in teaching these young men and women uh, how to be truly men and women of God. Lord, we lift up uh, every person who who uh, guides a child into knowing who Jesus Christ is. Lord, we uh, we thank you for those people that that come here and help help bring uh, the kids to understand who Jesus is and how to. And and Lord, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit for whispering in there the sweet little ears and letting them know that uh, that you love them and uh, you're there for them. Lord, I appreciate that. Uh, because without that, without that that sweet little talk, a little whisper in my daughter's ear, I probably would not be sitting here talking about you today, Lord. And I, I thank you for that. Lord, um, I thank you for saving my life, Lord. Lord, I, uh, 
Once again, I lift up everybody's come on to the broadcast. Uh, anybody who has had prayer requests, I forgot to write them down, and I'm bad. But we're praying for families. We're praying for marriages tonight, Lord. We pray for marriages, for Natalie's marriage. Let me write that down before I forget. Natalie, marriage. Uh, praying for marriages. We're strengthening marriages tonight, Lord. We uh, we ask for clarity and understanding in all situations that are that are involving a man and a woman in their marriage, Lord. Um, Lord, I just uh, I thank you for um, I thank you for giving me the, uh, the 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 resources to be able to share with other people about. Uh, we have four hours last night. Well, not good, brother. Lord, uh, I thank you for giving me the resources to be able to share with others how to speak. Um, life into someone who doesn't believe in, 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 in everything that we believe in. Lord, so uh, I really appreciate that, uh, those resources to be able to, uh, to share our faith with someone who may be a Jehovah Witness or someone who might be a, a Mormon. Lord, I appreciate the, uh, the, um, the books that you put in front of me to be able to help share. Lord, I, I, uh, I thank you for giving me the technology to be able to share this information. Lord, I just I appreciate everything that you do for me in my life. Lord, I, uh, I thank you for all my friends uh, and family that are on Jesus Did a Group and everybody who is on my broadcast. Lord, I, I just thank you for every single one of them. Lord, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my daughters. I thank you for um, everything that, that is here. I thank you for my house and my cars and my my, my ability to be able to provide for my family. Lord, I appreciate that. Um, that you're giving me a skill to be able to use it to glorify you. And the Lord, I am going to try to stand and, and be able to um, use this skills to be able to share your love and share the, the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, as much as I possibly can. Lord, I uh, once again thank you for your son. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. For you sending him down here to uh, to take horrible beatings, to uh, be put on a cross, and to uh, and to die, taking away my sins, Lord, I I thank you for him being able to conquer the grave, Lord. I thank you for him rising rising again three days later and taking my sin away with it, Lord. I uh, I don't deserve that, but I am so thankful for that. You are amazing, just as Rick sang in that song tonight, Lord. You are amazing, God. And we appreciate you, and we thank you for everything that you've given us. Especially for your son. For eternal life. Until the day that we meet face to face, Lord. I love you, and I worship you, and I thank you. In your loving son's name, I pray. Amen. Alright, guys. I didn't see any new ones come in there, so better be careful what you sow you're going to reap. <laughs> oh, goodness. Amen. Terry's awake. Wake, wake. You're staying awake all night. She's done it before, I tell you right now. Uh -huh. She was up all, all night one night praying, so she might have been praying for you. You're calling me at 5? Good. I need to get up at 5. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, let me see where I am at in stats, and we were at call tonight. 195. I got five more viewers. I'm pretty sure we can hang out for a little bit. Liz denies, right? I will say one thing. Liz has given 11,000. Oh, wait. It says it more. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. D. Dinez, right? Dinez. Oh, maybe I'm saying it right. Maybe I'm not saying it right. Liz, well, according to so Egg Drop says that you gave twelve thousand hearts, and um, Periscope app is saying um, eleven thousand four hundred ninety-six. Uh, accent in the first syllable. So day nice day. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna mess it up. So, oh, Dines. So I had it. I had it right the one time I said it. Dines. Dines. Di 
Well, either way, we'll figure it out one day. You'll be able to tell me we're in heaven, right? Um, or uh, or when uh, when I come out to uh, Texas or Dynasty. So Dynas, oh Dynas, I got you, Dynas. Free to laugh now, Chris Rossetti. Listen, um, guys, if you're not following Chris Rossetti, I suggest you do. That guy is so funny, and he's got some really good broadcasts. I'm still here, Steve. Um, I'm just trying to get a couple more viewers, and um, and then we are walking on out. I already prayed for everybody. I need two more to be able to be effective with the VIP program that I keep uh, petitioning them with. <laughs> Definitely check out uh, check out Chris Rossetti. Check out um, uh, Terry. I'm sorry, Terry Hicks. Um, I'm not sure. Um, Wendy's taking a bit, a little bit of a hiatus with, with her um, uh, with her um, painting broadcast, but she does come on every once in a while. Definitely can follow her. She's definitely got some really cool broadcasts. Becky Sims, you want to follow Becky Sims? It's Becky twelve twelve. Um, you want first syllable dynasty without the steam die. Yep, got it. You got my prayer request. What was it, brother? Steve, just follow Wendy. Yeah, Wendy's got some cool like painting broadcasts. Like so she so she does worship and painting together. And oh, she's like, yeah, I got some right here. So she does these really cool painting broadcasts, right? So she uh she sent me these these pretty 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 pictures. Um, so she does some really cool paintings. This is like windmills. You know, on, on a night, and then um, this one is what it's doing outside right now. It's lightning. <laughs> um, so some really cool paintings that she sent for me. Um, so definitely check her out. She says she has lots of paintings, and she's definitely looking to paint this week. So uh, definitely that. Um, Steve, what was your what was your prayer request, buddy? I must have missed it. I am sorry, Steve. But yeah, we uh, we have a nice. There's such a, a great group. If you go to JesusDidIt.org, um, such a great group. You can click on any one of the links there, and it'll take you right in. You know, of course, you want to follow Rick Costa. Um, why am I a bit tired tonight? I don't know, man. I just don't know. I'm waiting. Steve said he had a prayer request, so you get my prayer request. Awesome. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Did you send it to me in email? Uh, well, welcome to shopping areas for peace in mind and trying to sleep. Yep. Oh, you know what? We didn't. We didn't. Get, we didn't pray for peace. Yes, we did. Just a little bit. Lord and Father, we lift up uh, every person who needs more sleep, and I think I did touch on it, but. Lord, I know, I know that uh, people here need some sleep. They need some rest. They need some peace of mind and be able to uh, settle their minds and let them be able to get some sleep. Lord, uh, let let them. Uh, we cast away that that feeling of, of dizziness away from Steve tonight, Lord, and we just ask that you uh, give him uh, the uh, the ability to be able to put his phone down and put it off, and let him be able to uh, put his head on the pillow and and get some some really good good sleep, Lord. Let him wake up tomorrow rejuvenated and refreshed and, and being able to take on the day uh, with uh, feeling well rested and uh, just ready to to uh, to do your work, Lord. We ask this in your mighty son's name. Amen. Here I will be Bible reading and food journaling. I will after Bible reading and food journaling. You journal your food. That's pretty interesting. You journal your food. Hmm. All right. Well, um, it looks like we are about ready to get some sleep. <clears throat> I don't know why he's giving the German flag, but that's all right. Um, so, guys, yes, definitely remember go to. Uh, if you have a flag, I do too. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, guys, if you uh, like, I said, if you have any on the rebroadcast, 
If you have any prayer requests, uh, just send them, to them by email to me, and I'll pray for you. Um, not a problem with that. <coughs> Look at that. <coughs> Sorry, we got a pot. We got a pot. I should report his comment. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, listen, uh, know that Jesus loves you. Know that I love you. Know that every, I know, right? Almost blocked him. Know that every single member of the Jesus Did It family loves you. Um, check out the website. Go visit some other, other of the broadcasters. You, you know, you'll be completely satisfied with the, with the other broadcasters. I can guarantee you. Um, so definitely check them out. Guys, get some rest tonight. Uh, everybody get to sleep. Uh, Wendy, you uh, you get some sleep tomorrow morning. And uh, I'll let you get some sleep throughout the day. Um, you can still amuse yourself still. <clears throat> so Lord, we, uh, we just ask that uh, everybody get some rest and sleep. And guys, you, you um, once again, just know that Jesus loves you. I already said that part of it. But... Um, Still, know that he loves you. You know, don't don't uh, don't take that for granted. Because uh, he really does. He wouldn't have died on the cross. He wouldn't have done all that stuff. He wouldn't have done that work on the cross if he didn't love you. So um, take that with a heavy you know heaviness on you. Guys, get some sleep, get some rest, read that Bible tomorrow. Come on back tomorrow when we do another broadcast. Who knows? Maybe we'll tackle another religion that we want to share our Christian faith with. Uh, we'll figure that one out. Yeah, what is sleep? I have no idea. <coughs> Sorry. It can't be a broadcast without a sneeze. <laughs> so... Guys, uh, take it easy, get some rest, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, love you, and be blessed. Yes, you too. Be blessed, guys. <laughs>